Hey, happy weekend, YouTube. Just uh, doing a little update. I'm always updating. I never seem to get to a conclusion of anything. Uh, but uh, this is my project I'm working on. My uh, transdimensional technologies. That's my circuit board, and I know I didn't get to show it in my last uh, deal. I got all the FETs hooked up. Um, one hall sensor per four FETs. That's why I could put uh, the uh, heat sink on the on four because you know the, the pin two is is the output and. Um, and so it's tied into the uh, the back uh, heat sink. And so when you tie them all together, then all the outputs are tied together, which is okay because the output, the enable voltage output, I guess, on the hall sensor um, triggers all four of them anyway. And the, and the same with, with the other four over there. So that's kind of the circuit uh, capacitor. I can change it in and out. It's a socket. Everything's on sockets. Um, and, and the big news is that I have, you know, the, the first time I, the first video I did, um, I did, uh, I had four coils per wheel. So we got a little bit better lighting here. Let me, uh, let me show you what this thing looks like a little, a little better. It's changed from the last time. Last time I had only four drive coils on this one wheel. Now I have all eight. I took the four off of this drive plate and moved it on to this drive plate. Now I have all eight coils firing with both hulls symmetrically mounted. Um, and you can see from the back, there's no, no population of coils at all in this plate. Uh, I need to make another eight coils to get to get my second wheel uh, put in there. Now here's those pockets I was talking about. I've got these. These big magnets, they're uh, three quarter inch diameter, quarter inch thick, neodymium, I think, uh, 42s. And, uh, and they just go in here and they, they, uh, they super glue them in. And so with the, all the Norse facing out, and the Norse facing out on this one, and then when you put the two together, side by side, they want to repel and then not repel, but... As you're spinning the motor, they repel, not repel, repel, not repel. They'll hit a state of equilibrium, and it'll generate a certain resonant, magnetic resonant frequency. And that's the trick that I'm playing with, with this whole idea. And uh, so, without further ado, let me show you how this thing works with the new 8-coil uh, drive. The last, uh, I think the last, um, last, the last video I did, the peak RPMs I, I got was at 24 volts, was like 2100 RPMs, which is, you know, not all that great. 2100 RPMs. It's no big, no big achievement. I knew I had to do something to try to increase the RPMs. So that's why I put the other four coils all on the same rotor. Now we're driving one, one wheel will be driving uh, 20, 25 volts peak. And essentially that's the peak that these hall sensors will take. I could put a voltage regulator in here and and 
you know, channel the power I need for the hall sensor so that I can take these things all the way to 35 volts, these FEDs. That's the next step. Um, right now, I'm working on getting the timing done on this and seeing where this iteration takes me in terms of performance. Um, yeah, so, so let's, uh, let's get this thing fired up. All plug in, all plug and play. I'm going to start right about 18 volts. Now those are the timers, one on each side, and you notice I use uh, a little three pin connector hardware. <laughs> well, let's see, we got, uh, we got a little over 18 volts here, but let's see what kind of RPMs we got. Okay, now here we are. I'm at 2200. 2200 and 2215. And that's at 18 volts. I like to run it around 15 volts um, to get my timing right because the faster and faster it goes the more advanced you need in the timing. Um, even at 15 volts now I'm at 1950 RPMs just at 15 volts. Um, But when you want to crank her up, it'll start to get into a self-equilibrium. Um, it'll it'll change the sound. It'll change the harmonics. Everything will kind of change, and it'll just jump. 100 RPMs at that point now. That's something that it didn't do before. I clearly don't understand that. But it, it's smoking pretty good right now. It's, let's see what's, how fast it's going. I got 2820. 2820. Twenty-eight eighteen. Twenty-eight eighteen. So that's it. That's about as good as it's going to get. I might be able to tweak another fifty RPMs out of it with the with the timing. I notice it's more difficult to time a single wheel with two. Uh, hall sensors that both need to be timed and they need to complement each other. Um, but that's it. I could use some ceramic bearings too. Yeah, this thing rattles around a little bit. I could use some better bearings. You see how the magnets locked all the coils right here? Well, what I did is I drilled new holes in the top of the plate. And I used these quarter inch 
quarter inch by half inch little magnets um, and drilled the holes all the way through of course so I could get them out but and then I super glued them in and now I instead of looking at the magnets on the end of course I don't have a place to look at them anymore because I have all the coils in all the positions so I had to have trigger I had to drill the plate to put trigger magnets for the hall sensor so yeah and, uh, it's a little more difficult to to time but I noticed that the um, once you get it timed right once you get it timed right it goes pretty good one thing I wanted to show you too this is pretty cool cool to me cool to not a lot of people but hey, it's cool to me We're going to be looking at the uh, the frequency that this thing is running at. Alpha KZ right there. That's twenty eight hundred and twenty right there. And five hundred and sixteen hertz. I don't know. Maybe I don't know much about electronics, but that seems like really fast to me. Like, uh, like uh, you know, getting close to being almost ten times faster than a light bulb pulses per second. Each one of those coils. Oh, that's a lot of firing, man. That's a lot of firing each second. crazy that's a lot of that's a lot of seems fast to me but probably not near fast not near fast enough well that's it that's the the eight coiler half of the motors done and uh, once I get you know my uh, my coils interesting thing about the coils Is that, you know, when you buy your coils, if you buy them, so a lot of people make them, but you go to the ribbon, go to the ribbon shops, like uh, the dressmakers and stuff, and you can buy, you know, you can buy coils. These are these coils here. So I got the same coils, but with a larger diameter. So that I can put more wire, make more power. You see the difference. 
five eighths inch hole, five eighths inch hole. It's just and the and the width is the same. It's just the diameter changes. Well, anyway, point is, is that when you're doing projects like this, it really makes a lot of sense to uh, to find your uh, you know, find your coil your uh, your coil spools. Buy them online. Buy them online at the ribbon stores. That's it. So uh, that's another episode in the books. Thanks a lot for tuning in, checking out what's going on here up the homestead, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. You guys be good.